Play something these souls are like. Try whips, I know they like. Twister, you told a ride. Make you a celebrity overnight. Give you ice like Kobe, right? We sort of like Kobe, right? The way we mow them, right? Make you a celebrity overnight. Welcome back, everybody, and this is the second part of our E3 wrap up, E3 2018. It is Fox at FoxyGames underscore UK with another video. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and follow via Twitter for your source of aggregate news, rumor, and video game discussion with an emphasis on PlayStation but spanning a variety of platforms. If you're new to the channel, welcome, let us know how you found us, and please remember, thumbs up the video if you like, and hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Views expressed in our videos are those of third parties and do not necessarily represent the views of Foxy Games UK and all relevant links can be found in this video's description. That's the formalities out of the way. So yesterday the Foxy Games UK channel uploaded the definitive Xbox E3 2018 review which gained a very impressive 9 out of 10 score. Unfortunately I've received a lot of pushback and backlash from the PlayStation community of which I am part of. Sadly I spent much of this morning muting a bunch of ridiculous people on Twitter. Now look I think it's really important that people understand we all have our own expectations, desires and general preferences and no two gamers should be completely alike. We are all unique not a mimicry of someone aligned with an extremist gamer's viewpoint. Like Microsoft's head of gaming Phil Spencer said, the mentality seems to be in order to be successful someone has to fail. With that being said, Sony's E3 2018 PS4 press conference review, all of the big AAA announcements and some third party games as well. Now aside from the fact that Sony themselves announced that this year's E3 would give eager fans a deeper dive into the big four PS4 exclusives, Spider-Man, The Last of Us Part 2, Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima, it's fair to say going into E3 2018 Sony had the burden of high expectation. For every year of the PS4's life cycle, Sony has presented the most talked about shows of this entire console generation. Stunning visual fidelity, stunning gameplay and incredible talent on display from their own global development studios, Sony Worldwide Studios boss Shuhei Yoshida should be extremely proud of himself. But Sony did things a little different this year, Sony PlayStation boss Sean Layden shuffled onto stage, really a makeshift stage, constructed inside a tent no less that Leyden referred to as church indeed. As surprise to many, PlayStation Media Showcase was an odd affair this year. Not only did the show kick off in a mock church, which later on you'll understand why, Sony rather rudely expected the hundreds in attendance to progress to a smaller seated area, which is truly bizarre and not the way you'd expect a huge company like Sony to do things. Though, presentation and venue choices aside, the one thing that was similar, however, was the games shown were all very superb. Sony had an extremely short show which also had awkward intermissions and almost no actual reveals. This was extremely unsony like The good news is that what was shown looked utterly amazing, but there were pretty much no surprises other than the super highly anticipated Resident Evil 2 Remake. Man, I can't wait for that one. But the thing is, Resident Evil 2 Remake isn't even Sony's own game. However, moving on to a true bona fide Sony exclusive developed by one of my favorite studios ever, Insomniac Games Marvel and Sony collaborate to make Spider-Man which bizarrely enough may just actually be the only game shown on Sony's E3 stage actually coming out this fall. The extended gameplay looked incredible though. We are looking at greatness here people. I really think Spider-Man will be another Metacritic smash for Sony and a humongous system seller. This is the only time the little lines over your head to indicate danger in combat actually makes sense. Spidey sense. The web swinging looked incredible and the plot appeared to be someone no doubt deviously mysterious making super suits for all of Spider-Man's villains. Now during the gameplay demo, the iconic Spider-Man's villains, Electro, Rhino, Scorpion and Vulture appeared during a show down at the Wrath Prison facility. After a breathtaking web sling through the outskirts of the city, Spider-Man finds himself on a roof battling furiously with the four villains and Mr. Negative shows up just for good measure. Spider-Man succumbs to the supervillain's combined powers with the magnificent gameplay demo ending with a tease of another mysterious supervillain. However, on a slight bum note, Spider-Man was nothing particularly new. We've seen this before at past events over the years still. I'm incredibly excited for this and it's just another arrow for Sony's bow. Spider-Man on PS4 will no doubt own September in the charts and at retail and the MPD for that month pretty much belongs to Sony. 
Now, leaving many just as confused as ever, though a few videos have materialized on YouTube expertly breaking down the new trailer for the highly revered Hideo Kojima at Kojima Productions, yes, Death Stranding got another incredibly surreal yet almost photorealistic trailer running in real time and at 4K resolution on the PS4 Pro. Eager fans were treated to actual gameplay for the very first time. Starring The Walking Dead star Norman Reedus, traversing some of the most realistically beautiful landscapes in gaming, the character can be seen carrying heavy backpacks or packages with a role more in line with that of a transporter or some type of neo-futuristic UPS employee. In one scene you could clearly see the figure of a body wrapped in a silver material on his back, and many scenes were shown in typically cryptic Kojima style. Reedus and Bond movie Spectre actress Leia Sado were really being stalked by an invisible entity leaving handprints in the mud of what clearly appears to be some type of environmental fallout, even the rain seemingly ages anything it touches, as seen in the trailer. There's also more spoken dialogue being spoken in this trailer, particularly for Norman Reedus, who spoke more lines in this trailer than he had in the last two seasons of The Walking Dead TV show. Earlier trailers show ex-James Bond and Hannibal villain Mads Mikkelsen, and now we have bionic woman Lindsay Wagner joining the cast too. Creator of the super successful Metal Gear Solid franchise, Hideo Kojima, has devoted all of his attention to his latest opus, PS4 exclusive Death Stranding. While details of the game are still very much sketchy, the project is one of the most highly anticipated games of this generation, and even though the E3 footage does little to enlighten us, it did show lots of outdoor areas, vast open spaces, and many different characters making their way across a poorly inhabited land. The end game of the main character is not yet clear, but he appears to be saving others who are trapped by unknown creatures. No release date was given since really having taken a lot of heat in the past for revealing their games way too early, then having to delay them, let's just say Sony is more hesitant these days. Now I expect Death Stranding to launch sometime in 2019 and that'll be really a PS5 cross-platform title when that console launches. Stand by. The second of the big four had Sony presenting the first gameplay trailer for Ghost of Tsushima during the company's E3 2018 press conference. It opened with a samurai walking out of a forested area with his horse. He kneels down and picks up a leaf before the wind carries it away in epic style. The text appears on screen to denote it's day 9 of the Mongol invasion, indicating the game will track progression by splitting them into days. Now the character walks up a hill and looks over the Otsuna grassland and a beautiful field where wheat gently sways in the wind, the atmosphere is really superb, the samurai calls his horse and begins riding. Now the game looks absolutely stunning, eventually the samurai makes his way deep into a forest where he encounters invading forces killing someone. Now the three enemies square off but the samurai adopts a defensive stance, delivers a devastating counter and cuts his foes down with the most impressive animation for a combat sequence I've ever seen. Now the enemies begin to converge but the samurai uses defensive moves to negate their attacks, there's a very slow deliberate pace to it. Now a second female character called Masako appears and addresses the samurai as Jin. They're on their way to a temple to rescue a monk and to opt really to use a quiet approach or avoid detection as seen in many games these days, you can go in all action or very stealthy. Now they sneak up behind two enemies choosing the stealth option and kill them in unison. Jin hops onto a fence and then leaps onto a nearby roof using a robe to swing higher and enter a building so there's definitely some platforming involved. Now he skulks around the rafters, taking stock of the enemies before leaping down and delivering a crushing stab. In that moment, time slows and the camera moves to nearby enemies, giving Jin the opportunity to seamlessly move to another character and stab them. With the monk saved, Jin leaves the temple but Masako fires an arrow at the monk, revealing he killed Masako's family. Jin and Masako in a crimson field of leaves square off for a duel. Give me the monk, she tells Jin before lunging forward. The gameplay in this scene seems to involve adopting the proper stances to counter incoming attacks and exploit openings. Now throughout the conflict, Jin tries to reason with Masako, reminding her that the Mongols are coming and that those are the true enemies. Sure enough, the two eventually are besieged by Mongols but stand to face them together. Ghost of Tsushima is created by the minds behind Infamous and it's an open world game that takes place on the island of Tsushima during feudal Japan in 1274. Players take on the role of a vengeful yet honourable samurai who targets those responsible for wronging him. This game is clearly oozing with influences from classic movies, samurai movies that I love such as Seven Samurai and The Hidden Fortress, Sanjuro and Kajimusha. 
This is yet another Sony first party exclusive game setting the bar in visual detail, easily one of the best looking games on the PS4. The perfect game to show off the stunning high dynamic range capability of your 4K panel. Better still, the game has been confirmed to feature a photo mode and all the discs will ship with a Japanese language option for that added authenticity. Now in terms of gameplay mechanic, the slow-mo samurai combat looked utterly amazing and I for one cannot wait to unravel the plot twists of betrayal, loyalty and death before dishonor. Oh and there's that open world for us to traverse and really discover the lore of feudal Japan which is utterly magnificent. And now, and now for the big one. Every man, woman and their dog was waiting for and that was The Last of Us Part 2. And yeah, another PS4 exclusive we all expected to show up and show up it did. Sony revealed a visually spectacular cutscene which cleverly transitioned into actual gameplay and it was both soothing and wickedly terrifying, an odd juxtaposition that developer Naughty Dog pulled off masterfully. Now the trailer opened with Ellie talking to a man while watching a barn dance going on all around them. Eventually another female character appears in the scene and leads Ellie to the dance floor where they share a rather controversial passionate and tender kiss. I say controversial because the adult kids of the internet who seemingly hold views from the 1950s took to social media to crow about it, which is a shame. Anyway, during their discussion, Ellie says she's just a girl and not a fret, but her partner, however, replies that she thinks everyone should be terrified of Ellie. Their kiss transitions seamlessly into a shot of Ellie slitting a man's throat, mumbling, fuck her, as she releases his limp, lifeless body. From there we get an extended gameplay demo which Ellie creeping around the city as a dilapidated as in the first game really but also reclaimed by nature. After a scuffle with a couple of enemies Ellie takes refuge in some grass then creeping underneath a car to hide from her pursuers a detection meter appears as they look for her and the hiding spot is discovered and once again chaos ensues with Ellie once again in a brutal fight for her life. Ellie moves from area to area grabbing a bottle and lobbing it at an enemy before running into a shop and hiding behind a counter. Three enemies follow her in, one wielding a giant axe, they scale the room for her but Ellie crafts an explosive arrow while slipping around them. With it made, she fires it at an enemy, setting off a huge explosion. Ellie shows herself to be really more capable than ever in this sequel, slipping between shelves to get around her enemies, getting the jump on them and eventually bringing one of the bigger enemies to his knees. She also ruthlessly and sinks her axe into a now subdued enemy's neck. The trailer then smoothly transitions back to Ellie and her dance partner kissing. It's an intense trailer that shows off the brutality of The Last of Us Part 2 that was teased in previous videos. It seems the contrast between heartfelt moments, tenderness, innocence with the brutality of survival is a big part of the game. The Last of Us Part 2 shocked the internet with a trailer back in 2017 that depicted a violent scene during an apocalypse where humanity was struggling to survive. It was a dark and unsettling trailer to watch and this E3 2018 gameplay trailer seems to suggest that this violent tone will be an integral part of the game and I love it. So that was the big four. All lighting the beacon for AAA single player narrative excellence. But we're not done there because Sony still had a few surprises for the uninformed. This next reveal was no surprise to me having already reported it was coming some three years ago on this very channel. Resident Evil 2 is getting a full 3D remake and it will use a similar over the shoulder camera angle as the excellent Resident Evil 4. Capcom are building on the success of the last revamp and it was quite a coup for Sony being the first to show it off. As stated earlier in this video, Resident Evil 2 remake is a third party title so expect it to show up on other platforms. You can take control of Chris Redfield and pop more zombies heads on January 25th, 2019. And now, now it's time for a totally new IP from Alan Wake developer Remedy, looking more than a little reminiscent Quantum Break Anybody. Still, I'm intrigued by anything this talented studio does, even more so for Remedy's latest project called Control. Coming out in 2019, that's if it doesn't get delayed, looks like you play as a woman with telekinetic powers but also who is really good at shooting guns it seems. A very short but sweet stylized trailer that reminded me of Leonardo DiCaprio's movie Inception. We'll share more when we learn more on this one.
Also a sequel to the rock-hard RPG slash em up Neo had a very brief announced trailer, Neo 2. Still likely a PS4 exclusive and no doubt highly anticipated by the fans. Not much more to go on this one, but stay tuned for more details at upcoming events, perhaps the Tokyo Game Show 2018. Fear not though, Team Ninja are at the helm, therefore Neo 2 is in very capable hands. Now look, sure, there are the usual array of third-party partnerships for Destiny 2, Black Ops 4 among other big titles and of course Kingdom Hearts 3, and if I were to judge Sony purely on presentation, they would have come very low on my list as far as E3 presentations go. Lucky then that E3 should be judged on the content, not the crowd, not the venue, not the free giveaways, just the games shown. Well, Microsoft easily outclassed Sony in terms of audience excitement, the lighting, the ambience, the works. I really thoroughly enjoyed the Xbox event and I can at least look forward to a bright future for brand X. It still couldn't hold a candle to the sheer breadth and diversity and quality of Sony's first party PS4 exclusives. And for that reason and based purely on the games, Sony's PlayStation E3 2018 event gets a solid 10 out of 10. Now this year's winners are people like me, people who just want to experience great games on all of the platforms they own, and I own all three. So the real winner of E3 2018 is me. But let us know your thoughts and opinion on this video and unfortunately that brings us to the end. But let us continue the discussion in the video comments. And for more PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch coverage, subscribe to Foxy Games UK as well as more E3 news as we get through into the weekend. If you found any of the information in this video at all useful, why not hit the like button and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. Also, don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss out on any content. And for just one US dollar, one UK pound or equivalent, become a member by joining the Foxy Games UK Patreon and help us grow. You can find the link in this video's description. Thank you for your kind support. And there we have it. Another year, another E3. Until next time, always remember, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching, everybody. Girl, I thought